My name is Maureen Perry. Dr. Leslie Lever has just given me the honor of introducing both uh, our next featured artist as well as our new dean for the College of Fine Arts here at the University of Memphis. I'd like us all, please, if you have a moment, come in. And let's give a great big round of applause for Dr. Ann Hogan, the new dean. I'd also like now to introduce our next artist, a man of Memphis and both coasts, whose work we have featured back here in the Chrome Gallery. And I think you're all going to get a big kick out of his talk. Chris Ellis, and he's going to be coming in here in just a moment. Would you like to say a word here in the big room? Come with me. <laughs> Can we all go in there? If we cannot, maybe we should just stay put. Or let's stay put. Okay. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. All right, listen, I'm, um, I'm very grateful to everybody who came out. I've met a lot of old friends, a lot of new friends, a lot of Facebook friends I've never seen in my life. And you don't look a bit like your Facebook friends. <laughs> yes, you do. But listen, I've got, I, I want to remember some salient points, so I've made a, a, little, a few thousand words of, of recommendation. Commendation, and I'll try not like your president to go off book <laughs> too much. Now, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm truly honored and overwhelmed by this gathering and um, such an abundance of benevolent attention. It makes me feel like I'm at my own funeral. <laughs> I was wondering what that might be like. Maybe this is it. <laughs> um, now, a lot of people, uh, I see somebody from near Nashville, uh, somebody from Little Rock, but I'm the one who traveled farthest to get here, <laughs> so I get to talk first. <laughs> I, I, I think I traveled farthest. Geraldine Chaplin here, because she lives in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Ger Jerry? Uh, maybe she's in the restaurant. So I'll talk to you. Oh, from Rome. <laughs> okay, so she came. All right, then you talk. Get <laughs> I want to thank especially Leslie Liebers and Frederick Keppel, whose big fat idea it was to have this show here. And uh, of course, we've got to thank the university who's praying for the travel and the accommodations, even though that hospitality apparently does not extend to free breakfast at the hotel. <laughs> but still, I'm grateful. Now, when I, an unsophisticated boy from Fraser, Fraser, think art gallery, I think pretty pictures of Madame X's and water lilies and rockets red glare. Uh, these caricatures are not that. But they do look a little more grown up when they're matted and framed and lighted and well hung. And so I'm really delighted that they're here. Now, understand that as a caricaturissimo, I appreciate that I am unworthy to gather up the crumbs under the table of David Levine or Al Hirschfeld or Kerry Wagner. But none of them were available, so they had to set up a local. <laughs> so this is a mercy installation. <laughs> also, I want to thank, just give me a minute, I must acknowledge that I get the privilege, and I understand that I'm very blessed to have the privilege of sitting at a drawing board all day long for hours. Because 
my wife and family make that accommodation for me. They might as well because I don't make many movies anymore anyway. I got nothing else to do. But I, I told Crystal that I must acknowledge her and I'm grateful to that she not only permits this, but she encourages it. And uh, she doesn't really care anyway. She's got this new religion, this uh, Rodan and Fields skin care. <laughs> and in fact, she gave me a handful of samples to hand out to anybody who's going to it. It makes blemishes go away and it cures hoarseness. So I've got <laughs> some samples for anybody who wants some skincare stuff. Now, let me tell you something about these drawings and then we'll go back to hugging and to doing selfies. These drawings are all actuated in the spirit of mirth, um, which has been described as malice by some people. And maybe sometimes there's a little bit of that in there. Freud said, well, actually, I don't have any idea what Freud said, because I'm the guy who never read one word of what Sigmund Freud wrote in the 21 volume collected works of Sigmund Freud. But a trained medical professional who each week is paid a whole lot of money by my health care provider to listen to me talk about myself on the couch told me that what Freud said was, <laughs> that the foundation of all comedy is cruelty. I don't know. Maybe Freud was wrong. Maybe sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. I know sometimes a toothpick is just a toothpick, but you know, let's face it, a cigar is always a penis. <laughs> Big brown penis. <laughs> I don't know. Um, these caricatures, I hope, are not done in a spirit of malice, but they are the, like the equivalent of the rantings of Jeremiah or John the Baptizer, um, whose own rantings were their own response to a world of moral outrages. I'm the same thing, but... I'm, I just do it on paper. And just because those guys didn't do it for laughs, they wound up in the Bible. Is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there are explanatory texts with each drawing. And I spend as much time on them as I do on, on, on the drawings. And they frequently, and I wanted to say this because I like this word, I use in these texts most often, a rhetorical device called paraprosdokia. Any of you English teachers out there want to tell us what that is? Time's up. I'll tell you. The Catskills, the Borscht Belt translation of it is cracking wise. It's just a joke. A knock-knock joke is a paraprosdokia. Not not who's there, madame, madame, who, madame, so it's called before open it up. That's a paraphrasedokia, in which there's a setup with a punchline that turns everything on its head, and that's what I very often try to accomplish in these texts, these accompanying texts. But I, I just I haven't really had a chance to see what's on in the show, but I did see a couple of drawings that I want to talk about because this is how these drawings come to have come to be. Every day, I draw somebody who died on that day in history. These, these drawings are my version of exorcising demons that have been lurking inside me for a long time. And uh, a couple of particular examples are, uh, is Nathan Bedford Forrest in this show? Yeah. yeah. All right. I drew that long before all, all this talk about pulling down statues to American traders. Uh, and I did that because that is, I realized when I was drawing that, that it has been roiling inside me all my life that here is a, a, a glorious monument to somebody who devoted the best efforts of his life to undermining the United States government and to perpetuating an institution dedicated to hurting people's feelings. 
Now let's not call anybody racist or anything like that. Let's just say what it is. It hurts people's feelings. We should not glorify that. We shouldn't glorify that in the White House. We shouldn't glorify that in our municipal monuments. And so when I drew Nathan Bedford Forrest, I noticed he died on this day, and so I looked him up and I started finding out he was a no good son of a bitch all his life, not just that. <laughs> and, and then Swerner, Cheney, and Goodman, and, I'll, and then I'll stop getting particular. Swerner, Cheney, and Goodman are, those are three names that a lot of people in this room may not remember. Certainly people younger than I, but. Uh, people older than I should remember the names of three teenagers who were shot and killed by law enforcement officers slash Kate Klansmen seven miles from Philadelphia, Mississippi, one night in, in Philadelphia, Mississippi, in 1964. That represented to me at age 14 a moment of moral clarity that I didn't have many times in my life. In matters of morality, very often, Right and wrong are not easily discerned. They're like this. We, knew, we live with this all the time. Newby Dykes, who was here earlier, was talking about, many years ago, about doing business with China. Buying clothes. This, this shirt was made by a child in China who should be in school. And she said, you cannot be engaged in the world without doing business with Satan. You, you, but she grows her own vegetables and raises her own chickens. She does her part. But, Morality is like this a lot of times. In the civil rights struggle in this country, that was one of the few times, and maybe it's just because it was my coming of age, when right was over here and wrong was over here, and it was easy to see what was right and what was wrong. And a lot of people muddied those waters of moral clarity with all kinds of justifications, but it was black, blacks need not apply. That's the simple version. And in the case of the civil rights movement, in particular, these three kids, I remember being 14 and hearing my dad say they were outside agitators and they got what was coming to them. And my mother said they were children and they got their fucking brains blown out by a policeman. And that was the first time I saw my parents at variance in a fundamental way. And that's the time when I said, and I said to myself at that moment, remember this. And I always had. And so when I drew Ch Swerner, Cheney, and Goodman, it was like purging this for me. The commentary mentioned something else that I don't think everybody should quickly forget. They were killed in Philadelphia, Mississippi in 1964. Fifteen years later, Ronald Reagan initiated his presidential campaign with his one and only states' rights speech. Delivered where? New York? Beverly Hills? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? No. Philadelphia, Mississippi. Speaking about states' rights. That was the one time he used that phrase in his adult life, after 1979. It was his way of saying, here's the dog whistle, boys. Anybody who is unsympathetic to the rights of everybody. Sign up with me. And so I mentioned that there. Um, 25 years ago, I used to do t-shirts annually for the p &H Cafe's Dead Elvis Ball. And I'd send the shirts to Memphis, because I was in Los Angeles, I'd send them to Memphis, and my sister would sell them at the P&H on the night of the Dead Elvis Ball. And one year, I sent her the art of a big, full, that filled out Elvis with the caption, another junkie dead on the bathroom floor, some king. <laughs> and my sister said, how about this? Shall I come back tonight? <laughs> See, wasn't that better? And I said, yeah, you don't have to be nasty. You can, you can make your point without being nasty. So I, I, I hope that there is no nastiness out here, some people have suggested as much, and I, I hope not. These are drawings that just give utterance to smoldering demons that are within, but for your purpose, they are just here to beguile a few minutes of casual perusal. And I hope they invoke laughter, and it's okay to laugh with them or at them. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Thank you.